How is it going everybody? It's Sean here and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the Nike Dunk Low Premium Concept Japan in this brown snakeskin colorway. So Concept Japan, for those who aren't familiar with it, referred to Japan exclusive pairs of sneakers which Nike would release back in the 90s and early 2000s. And during that era, before e-commerce and all that stuff, sneakerheads had to make connections with people in Japan, or in some cases even fly there themselves, to bring over those pairs here to North America. So that's why throughout history there's been a ton of very hyped up and very sought after colorways of sneakers, which makes sense given their exclusivity. So according to sneaker blogs and sneaker websites, these dunks are bringing back Concept Japan on this new colorway nicknamed the Brown Snakeskin colorway. So these released in late May for a price of 120 US dollars or 160 here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is natural, black, ale brown, pecan, dark driftwood, and university red. And I'm personally kind of confused how these are Concept Japan because these definitely released here in Canada. So for sure they weren't a Japan exclusive. So if anyone knows and wants to clarify, drop a comment down below because I'm pretty lost and I'd like some clarification as well. So taking a deep dive into these dunks, as we start things off with the toe box, this is covered in a snakeskin printed leather. So if you look real close, it almost has a mesh like looking layer similar to snakeskin pressed on directly on top. And just like any other dunk, we have these perforations found throughout the toe box. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this distressed and worn in looking leather, which has a bit of a cracked appearance to it when you look at it real close up. And then covering the eye stays of the shoe, this is covered in a light brown colored suede. And then underneath this on the mid panel, we have more of that snakeskin leather. And then overlaid on top of this, we have a debossed shiny black leather swoosh. Moving next to this, this top portion of the wing or flap of the shoe, this is covered in a similar distressed and worn in colored leather, but it's a bit of a lighter shade compared to the leather we saw earlier on the toe box. And then surrounding the bottom of the heel, we have more of that distressed looking leather, but once again it's done in more of a darker shade compared to the panel right above it. Right above this we have more of that snakeskin printed leather, and then the top of the heel is covered in that debossed black leather, and we have Nike branding embroidered across in red. In terms of laces, so these come with two different lace options. The standard default lace is a flat style lace in black, but they also give you a cream colored lace as well if you want to give the shoe a bit more of a tonal look and appearance. Underneath this, the tongue is crafted using nylon in this off-white or light beige color, and then the edges of the tongue are covered in a black colored nylon, and we have this tag on the top with Nike branding in red. On the back side of the tongue, you'll see it's covered in a black colored mesh, and the tag here, we have that classic LE or limited edition Nike logo, along with the phrase co.jp stands for Concept Japan and was once the URL of Nike's website for Japan. The interior of the shoe is lined in a black colored leather, which gives it more of a premium feel and finish. And then as far as the insole, these come with your standard foam blind insole. It's covered in a black colored finish on top, and we have that limited edition LE logo pressed on the heel in red. So the upper of the dunk sits atop this solid rubber cup sole, which is painted in the sail or off-white color. And then turning the shoe over to the bottom, this is your classic dunk outsole, and it's crafted entirely in a brown colored rubber. We still have that same circular pivot point on the forefoot, along with the Nike logo right in the center. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these dunks. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other Nike sportswear dunks, so I'd stick true to size. My foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, meaning when I step on a Brannock device at a shoe store, I'm actually a men's US 10 in between a D and an E width. So I got these in a size 10 and they fit me perfectly in a nice snug way. So whatever size you normally wear for the Nike sportswear dunks, whether that's half size down, true to size, or half size up, I just stick with that normal size that you usually go with and you should be okay. Moving on to the comfort, so these feel like any other dunk, meaning it's going to be pretty flat, firm, and low to the ground. There's honestly not too much from a softness and step in comfort perspective, but for an everyday casual use shoe, dunks are going to be fine. They're not going to be something I'd say that is very, very comfortable, but it's not going to leave your feet aching, assuming you're not walking for 25,000 steps in a day, for example. Otherwise, I think these shoes will be perfectly fine. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship on this shoe, so this is the area of the shoe I was most impressed with. So first off, material quality I was pretty happy with. I thought the leathers that they use on the shoe, it definitely felt above average compared to a typical Nike sportswear dunk. And I love how they use such a variety of materials, even the subtleties with the different brown leathers that they use. It's something that I really appreciated. 
And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, same thing. I thought my pair was pretty flawless in terms of how it was built. The stitch job was good, no visible glue stains, no issues with the paint that I could see. So all in all, I'd say that this dunk definitely lives up to the premium that's featured on the name of the box. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet. I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm still pretty confused how these are considered Concept Japan. Are they just paying homage to similar looking shoes from that era? I still don't know, so clarify down below if you guys do know. But for what it is, I think this is a very clean pair of dunks. I know some people have been saying this is similar to the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s in that OG brown colorway, but putting aside hype comparisons, I think the colorway of the shoe is very, very clean. And we know in today's day and age, brown and cream or off-white colored combinations are doing pretty popular. And some people might not like the red hits on this shoe, but I really appreciate that added pop of color. And it's subtle enough that it's not too in your face and too distracting. It's just a little bit of pop that I personally liked. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this Concept Japan Nike Dunk Low in this brown snakeskin colorway? What are your overall thoughts on this colorway? And is this a pair that you guys picked up for yourself? Did you pass or take an L? Whatever it was, drop a comment down below and let's talk about this. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8. Follow my Twitter account at sean.go and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.